today's challenge is going to be to create the what I'm calling the syringe cap. It's what's going to go onto the head of the syringe right here and allow the pivot points uh, just like our uh, syringe collar did over here so that we can put a screw in from the side and uh, connect the rest of our uh, excavator, our syringe arm, to, uh, to this cap right here. Now, although we're going to model the part in uh, Fusion 360, I want to point out that I don't generally design my parts in Fusion 360. So I guess it's a bit of a subtle definition that many people might choose to argue with. Uh, yes, I do designing in Fusion 360 as well. But where I like to start is with a good old uh, pencil and a piece of paper. And, uh, you know, I take some measurements and I sit down and I sketch out lots of ideas before I start working on this. So, uh, you know, you can see here I'm trying to look. I've got printouts of the actual sizes of the, uh, of the different uh, heads that we'd have for syringes. So if you've got a 10 milliliter syringe, uh, the head is going to be 17 millimeters diameter. And this is the dimensions of the uh, flanges that run up to that on the, uh, on the plunger. You can see that it's a cross section running right down here and we've got smaller syringes. So the information that you need uh, is all right in here for manufacturing those parts. So if you want, you can take a screenshot of that if you need those dimensions. And uh, so anyways, I'm just gonna move that off to the side and I've come up with this design right here, which I think is going to be fairly easy to 3D print. And this head of the plunger will uh, fit down right into here. And you can see I'm gonna leave a couple of holes in there so that I can drill a hole in here and a hole in here and then uh, run a screw through. Or maybe that's just gonna be uh, enough of a uh, space for, for glue to uh, squeeze through those holes and uh, give me a nice solid uh, glue joint to hold that cap onto the plunger right here. So, okay, let's get started and uh, come into Fusion 360. And we're in the mechanical design section right here. I have opened this up to my syringe excavator folder, which is where I'm storing all my parts for this project. So uh, in here, I've got the syringe collar that I built in the last tutorial. Since then, I've also modeled uh, three different sizes of syringe head and uh, put them together and created a drawing. A little later on in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how you can go ahead and create a nice dimensioned uh, drawing so that you can print your plan out and share it with other people. Not that Fusion 360 doesn't do a great job of uh, sharing the 3D design, but there comes a time when you want to create a traditional orthographic uh, drawing. Alrighty, so let's get started here. And one of the things that we can do is before we begin the drawing is let's just give it a name by clicking on save. Make sure that the location you're saving it to has already been selected. This is going into syringe excavator and I'm going to call this the syringe cap. Okay, I may come along and uh, give it different sizes later on, but there we go. I've saved the syringe cap right in here. As with any uh, drawing in Fusion 360 or any model, we're going to uh, get started by creating a sketch right here. And pick a plane that you want to create it on. And then we've got our origin right here, a point where we can start our designs from. So uh, one of the primary features of this is that it is going to be round. Uh, it's got to fit around that gap so we can put our start mark right there. And that's going to be way too big. Let's just bring that down right here. Now, if we think about how this is going to work, our syringe is going to fit inside here. That cap is going to slide right in here. So I actually want to make this oh, a few millimeters larger in radius than, uh, than the diameter is. So when I come along, I'm just going to put a dimension on this. And let's do this for our smallest uh, syringe. And the smallest syringe is the 10 milliliter syringe. It has a 17 millimeter uh, diameter. And uh, so what we're gonna do is we will take that and we'll just uh, uh, double that to get a 34, or sorry, 17 millimeter diameter. I'm not gonna dimension the radius right in here. There we go, 17 millimeter diameter right across there. Now that exactly matches 
the, uh, the dimensions of the head. So what I want to do is take that and I want to have, oh, a couple of millimeters coming around the outside. So I could either draw a circle here and make it uh, larger, or I could do an offset. I think circle will go faster. And we'll just come in right here. And for our dimension on that, I want to make that uh, to be about three millimeters on the outside. It could go down to two. So uh, let's say it's going to equal this dimension right here uh, plus four. So you can put mathematical formula into here as well. So there we go right on there. And uh, now we've got, uh, this is where the syringe would fit into. This is the outside uh, diameter right here. And that's going to allow us to put that syringe in there and have it uh, uh, be properly oriented. Okay, uh, next thing we're going to need to uh, create the spots for our, um, uh, our screws to come in from the side. And that was looking fairly rectangular. So I'm going to create a rectangle right here and come across right like so. Now for dimensioning that, I think we'll want to come right here. We'll pop a dimension on here and 10 millimeters is probably sufficient right across that way. And then we want it to be perfectly centered on this spot right here. So I'll take a dimension right here dimension right there and that's right now telling me five which is fine that means it's uh, going to be perfectly centered but if I want to make it parametric I'm going to click on the 10 and divide that by two and now this should automatically self-align right onto the center and then we want to control how wide this is so I'll take a dimension from here to right here to give me an overall dimension I think we uh, set some of our smaller ones to 30 when we made the uh, syringe ca uh, or the syringe clamp, and so we'll try and get that to match up. And then I'll take a dimension from right here to right here, and I'll make that equal to 30 divided by 2, and that moves that over so that that is going to be perfectly centered right on there. I'm thinking we probably need to make it wider than that. If I'm going to drive a screw in from the end right here, that screw probably needs a bit more space. So I'm just going to take that up to 40. We might have to change our, our clamp. I think the last clamp that we made for the, uh, for the larger syringe, we actually had to take it up to 50. So uh, the beauty of, of it all being parametric is it remains centered right on here. And uh, away we go. We've got a sketch right here. It's dimensioned. Things are locked down in place. At least I hope they are. And let's finish that sketch. And now, uh, if you want to rotate around and you're working with a mouse, you can use the orbit. I've got a fancy pants uh, three-dimensional mouse, so I can just pivot it right like that. You can also drag around on the view cube right up there. And we are going to do an extrude. And we've got a couple of different things that we could do right on here. Uh, we could extrude uh, just this ring right here, and we could take that out a centimeter, uh, or sorry, uh, we could take that out a centimeter and then come back and put a cap on the back of it. I want this back of it to stay nice and flush though, so that if I go to 3D print it, I can just flip that back down and print it right onto the bed and probably don't have to put any, um, any raft or anything like that underneath it. Certainly no support material if we can avoid it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to extrude the whole thing. And I'm going to take that out uh, 10 millimeters. Okay, well, that was pretty simple. Now I've got space to put a hole coming in right there or a hole coming in that side. I'm not going to do that just yet, however, because there's nowhere for that plunger to go right into the middle. So I want that cap to come back to the inside. So what we can do is we can create a new sketch 
and we're going to create that sketch on this face right here. So you can see I've got that face highlighted. It pivots down right here. And there's my center point right there. I am just going to project this curve right here uh, onto, uh, onto this drawing so that I know that when I draw it, I am three millimeters uh, in from right there. So I am going to create a circle. Okay, oh, sorry, before I do that, I go create and project okay and let's take there we go so we've got that in there so i've got something to dimension to so if i go back and change the other one then that will change and i'll have a reference right there and i'll go okay and now when i create my circle i can come out to right here and to dimension the circle Remember we uh, made the outside three millimeters greater. So I can come in here and tell it I want this gap right here to be that three millimeter gap that I applied originally. So now this should be a 17 millimeter diameter and it should be fully parametric when I change that. And I will finish my sketch right here and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this circle. And so I come to my extrude tool, click on extrude, but instead of coming out in this direction, I am going to push it back in that direction. And as we push it back that way, you can see that it's actually changed our operation from what was originally a join into a cut. So now it said, oh wait, if you're extruding into the object, you probably want to remove something and I'm going to take that back to minus eight millimeters so that I've got eight millimeters uh, depth, which leaves me two millimeters uh, of, uh, of base where that material will be uh, sitting. And there we go. Now I've got a hole in the middle for that uh, cap to pull, push down into. Alrighty. Now we'd like to put a, uh, a hole on the end and so I'm just going to uh, create a sketch on the end just to uh, find a parametric center point. So create a sketch on this plane right here. And I'm just going to make a couple of construction lines. And let's zoom in right here from that corner to that corner and from that corner to that corner, that will automatically define our center point for us. And uh, why not come in here? And you can actually create a sketch point and you can put that right at the middle of that point right there so that we've got an easy to find reference later on when it comes time to make our hole. That wasn't quite the way I wanted to rotate it, put it back in that same position so that we can see this right in here okay so now you could if you'd wanted there you could have just drawn a circle of the appropriate size and extruded it all the way through and uh, had it do the cut operation that would have done uh, a perfectly fine hole there's many different solutions to the problems uh, that we can see in uh, fusion 360 now it wants to know your placement okay it says select your sketch points this is handy if you're putting multiple holes onto an object. If you've got all of your sketch points laid out, you can say, I want that sketch point, that sketch point, that sketch point. And then later on, if you move those sketch points, your holes should move along and follow with them. Okay, uh, our extent, we want it, uh, instead of going a distance, we could just tell it we want it to go all the way through. We want it to go to and out the other side. So when I click that, I can rotate this around right here and tell it that I want it to go to that surface right there. Okay, and that's got a hole. Now the hole's still too big. So if we wanted to, we could just tell it uh, the dimensions that we want that hole to be, or we can uh, get a little bit fancy in here and we can tell it that we are going to uh, tap that hole for a uh, ANSI unified screw thread 
and we want to fit a number six screw down in there. And that usually works out okay. You can see we've got a nice threaded diagram. Obviously, if we 3D print this, the 3D printer doesn't have the ability, uh, most 3D printers don't have the ability to print that level of detail for the threads, but some will. And uh, there we go. We've got that running right through there. It's nice and centered on that part. Our uh, uh, plunger is going to come right down in here and rest on that face. Now, I said we might want to leave uh, some holes in this uh, bottom layer right here so that there's space for uh, glue to attach. So let's take a look at how we might go about doing that. And to do that, what I want to do is I'm going to create a sketch. Uh, let's see, right on here. And I'm going to come right in here. And now I want to create uh, an array of little holes where this is going to go. And uh, so I need to come up with a way of spacing those holes and figuring out where they're going to go. So I'm going to create a construction line. And the line is going to come from the center right out here. And let's just bring it to that outside edge. OK. And uh, let's see, we'll finish that. Oh, one more construction line. And I'll figure out what hole diameter, bolt circle diameter, I want these to be at. OK, I'm going to turn off the construction line right here. And now I will dimension how far in from the edge do I want that to be. And let's come in. That says one and a half right now. Let's make it two millimeters in from the edge. OK, so there we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'll put one of these holes uh, right in here. So I've turned off construction line. So this is actually going to be a genuine hole. And I'll make a two millimeter diameter hole. Actually, if we make it three millimeters in diameter, then uh, Three millimeters, I think, seems to fit a number four screw. Oh. Okay, so now if we twist the uh, uh, the the plunger a little bit, our T pattern, our T pattern, our cross pattern of those flanges is going to come here and here, and we'll be able to put holes in right around here so that we can run uh, screws or pop rivets or even just uh, have a little bit of glue squish through right there and we can drill matching holes onto the uh, head and we should be able to stick these two together fairly nicely. Now what we'd like to do is we'd like to get four holes like that and uh, in order to do that we want to uh, create an array and uh, where are we right here? Create um, circular pattern Okay, so if we take circular pattern, it says what object do you want a circular pattern for? We selected that, so the uh, box right here went blue and it says one selected. So it says what's your center point? I'm going to select that and I'm going to say my center point is right there. And uh, it's like how many would you like? How far around the circle do you want to go? I would like four of them, please. Okay, and OK, now we've got those uh, four holes going right around there, nice and parametrically around the outside. And I'll finish that sketch. And what we can do now is let's just rotate this around so we can see that in a three dimensional view. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to do an extrude. One two, three, four, select those four different surfaces. And rather than telling it a distance, I'm going to tell it that I want my extent to be to an object, to that object right there. And now they punch through out on the other side. Now, you may be wondering why I choose to draw the holes and do an extrude rather than using the hole command. 
nothing at all wrong with going through and putting sketch points at each of those locations and uh, punching a hole right through there. Uh, or putting a hole in one place and uh, you've got rectangular patterns up here and uh, you've got uh, circular patterns in here somewhere too. So there's all sorts of different ways to solve that problem. So, okay, uh, now we can uh, push a plunger right down in here. Uh, obviously the screw's not running all the way through there because we're gonna have the cross section of the plunger head in there. But if we drill matching holes, we should be able to get that to come in here and uh, connect fairly nicely. Just looking at that, those look a little too close to the outside. I'm thinking if I put a screw on here, the screw head is going to bash into the edge right here. So I'm gonna bring those in just a little bit. And this is again, the beauty of parametric modeling. There's my extrude. So I'm down here at the bottom of the screen on the timeline. My extrude, if I need to edit it, it's right there. And my sketch is right here. I can double click on the sketch. I can come in here and say, ooh, I should have stood that off probably by three millimeters. And I think that's gonna give me a little bit more room on there. Finish that sketch. And there we go. Everything's moved in there a little bit more nicely. And that gives us more room if uh, we need to put a bolt head right around uh, there. On the bigger uh, ones, you could, of course, uh, make that a little greater, uh, little greater uh, offset from the edge. So this is looking good. Um, we'd like to wrap it up with a few nice details. And uh, one of the things I like to do is fill at the corners uh, because it's just so darn easy to do when you're preparing a project for 3D printing. Now, some of the corners you don't want to fill it too much because uh, certainly if we print it in this sort of orientation, then down on the bottom right here, we're not going to get as good a resolution. Uh, because that's where we're building up our layers. You might need a little bit of support material, but for a small radius, which is what we're gonna do, you can probably get away with it. So uh, let's pick some surfaces to fill it. We may as well fill it that out, fill it that out. There's probably a quicker way to select all of these edges. I'm not doing the inside one. I want that to stay nice and crisp and square. Now, one of the things uh, that I am considering as I do this, make sure I get all the edges. It's always embarrassing to miss an edge. You can go back and edit it later on, or you can add another fillet, but take a look at that. I think everything has turned blue. And let's give it a one millimeter radius might even be able to take that up to a two millimeter radius. That just makes for a nicer looking part. The other thing it does uh, is that it tends to remove some of the stress concentrations. Sharp corners tend to create stress concentrations. And while you know fatigue is not likely to be a long time life cycle issue in our syringe arm, uh, it's definitely uh, an issue in some of the more complex mechanical engineering challenges that people face. So take a look, make sure we've got all of the edges that we wanted to have radius. That's looking pretty good. And there we go, our head should be able to fit right in there. Let's click on OK. So there we go, that one should fit our small 10 milliliter syringe. Let's check and see if we've got this uh, working nicely for a 20 milliliter syringe. And so to do that, we're going to come back down here on the timeline 
and you can see that we've got our various sketches. We can actually go back in the timeline. If you drag that back, I went one step back in time before I did that fillet. Here I did it, uh, I can drag it back one more step before I did that extrude. And then you can make edits at that point and then drag the timeline back up to here and see how that all plays out. We're gonna jump right back here to sketch number one. Our alternative way to get at that is to come up to our hierarchy right here and go into sketch number one. And what we said was that the largest one we're going to make has a 24 millimeter inside diameter. That pumps the size up right there. And uh, if we finish that sketch, there is now room in there to fit the uh, cap of the largest syringe right inside of that hole. So I think we're looking pretty good right on there. Alrighty, um, what else can we do to this uh, that's uh, worth worth noting? If we wanted to get uh, really fancy and keep track of, uh, you know, which syringe was uh, which cap was for which size syringe, we could come in here and we could create a new sketch and we could put 30 mL right on here and then we could extrude that a half millimeter into the surface and then when the 3D printer kicked it out, it would leave it reading 30 mL on the inside. But that's something that nobody would see. The downside, if you tried to do it on this side, of course, is that that would leave a hollow space uh, underneath. So maybe on this side, you'd only move it in like. 0.2 of a millimeter, which would be one layer thickness, so it wouldn't interfere with the quality of your print, but it would just move the print head in a different direction. Might come out looking interesting. The other thing I want to mention is that the dimensions that I've given you for the uh, for the caps on the syringe are pretty precise. So if I tell you that uh, that cap is a 24 millimeter diameter, and you make this hole coming right down in here, 24 millimeters in diameter, you're relying on the fact that the 3D printer won't be just a little bit off on its inside diameters. Okay, and this is where having access to a 3D printer is pretty handy for prototyping things. With larger diameter holes, um, I usually find that the margin of error is fairly forgiving. Uh, and you can usually fit the part in and it comes out fairly close to what you want. But on the smaller diameter holes, uh, and depending on the printer and depending on uh, some of the compensation parameters in your slicing, you'll find that a tiny, tiny, tiny little difference in hole diameter can make a huge difference as to whether something fits through that hole nicely. And my experience is that most of the 3D printers I've used tend to make the inside diameter slightly smaller than you've specified. So if I was worried about that and I had to get this working the first time out, I would probably take this radius and make it about a tenth of a millimeter, maybe even two tenths of a millimeter, uh, sorry, uh, make this diameter uh, two tenths of a millimeter probably larger than it needed to be just in case the 3D printer was off in its calibration or off in its tolerances or some of the plastic ooze to the inside and then you'd still be able to fit your uh, uh, syringe uh, plunger right down inside and you'd still have a tight enough fit that it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't snap out. Now there's all sorts of other ways to connect that syringe right in there. For instance, instead of fitting the entire uh, cap in, you could have cut the disc off the cap and you could have just left, left a cross right in here. And then you could have ran pins down vertically right through here to, uh, to pin that cross into place. And that would have kept it from wiggling or wobbling around. Uh, you could have uh, created a couple of screws that were offset slightly so that when you push that down to lock it in place, the offset screws would come in and they'd pinch onto one of the flanges. But by and large, uh, this looks like it's going to work out uh, fairly well. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we want to take a look at how can we create a nicely dimensioned two-dimensional drawing of our parts. So let's save this, okay? And this one I'm going to save as and we set this dimension up. This was the syringe cap, but this was for the 30 milliliter syringe. Okay, and I'm going to save that because it had the 24 millimeter diameter. 
And then I am going to uh, save as again. But this time I'm going to call it the syringe cap at the, uh, this is the 20 milliliter diameter syringe. And what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to come back to that first sketch, change our parameters right here. That's not a 24 millimeter diameter. My dimension for that is 22.9. And again, like I say, if we're, if we're not sure, we could probably make that 23 and have good justifiable reason for doing it. Finish that sketch. And now you can see that this diameter shrunk down. If you're ever not sure, hey, did that actually change? We've got an inspect feature right up here. And uh, you can come along. And if I want to inspect that circle right there, it uh, gives me the uh, diameter of that circle right there, which tells me it's 20.9. That's not going to fit. I want that to be 22.9. Well, okay. Uh, oops. Good thing we checked that final dimension because it was definitely wrong. Uh, and so uh, thanks to the marvels of video editing, I was able to take a moment and go on back and figure out just what I did in this drawing to make such a mistake. And uh, I found it. Uh, I don't know if you noticed it when it was happening, but uh, it occurred in one of the sketches when I was dimensioning things, and this is the size I told it to be. The computer did nothing wrong, but I definitely made a mistake laying this all out. Thankfully, uh, it's easy to change once you find your mistake. So to track that down, one of the things I did was I said, well, let's just do an inspect right here, and let's use our measure tool, and I picked this surface right here and then I said well how far away is that surface from that surface and it gives me some results over here and it tells me that the maximum distance is 23.9 that's from one side to the other but the minimum distance is three millimeters so I set that to be three millimeters in from the outside surface but let me close that off if I go back to my very first sketch back in here, you'll recall that the dimension that I set up right here, okay, this diameter is 22.9. I only added four to the diameter right here, meaning that I designed it to have a wall thickness of two. So I've got two possible ways to change this. One of the ways is to go up to a three millimeter wall thickness, which is perfectly fine. And the other one is to go back and redefine the sketch where I did my um, material removal and set that down to um, a two millimeter wall thickness. A uh, three millimeter wall thickness is gonna take slightly longer to print, but uh, might turn out uh, to be a little more rigid. Certainly where it joins in right over here, uh, that might give us a bit more meat in that connection. So I'm just gonna take this size up and if I double click on that dimension, you can say that's D1 plus four millimeters. Again, when I'm increasing the radius, uh, I need to double the amount that I increase the diameter. So I make it D1 plus six. Finish my sketch. Come back over here. And now if I inspect the inside diameter, that's the 22.9 that I want for a 20 milliliter syringe cap. So I'm just gonna close that right there. Be grateful that I checked my dimensions from time to time. And uh, I'm just going to uh, save that now. And that's one of the beauties of Fusion 360 is if you ever do make a mistake, it saves various versions of your design. So if my correction was an error, I can always go back to version one of the design. You can see right over here, that's sitting with a different versioning open. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna close that because that one's working fine. And I'm gonna come in here to syringe cap 30 milliliters. And we've got the same mistake in that one. And I can go back to that original sketch. 
and I can come on and click right there, make that up to six. Finish that sketch. And now I can do an inspect and make sure that inside diameter is uh, 24 millimeters, uh, just like we want for a 30 millimeter syringe. So that's great. And I'm gonna save that. And then I'm going to convert that into a 10 milliliter uh, syringe cap. So I'm going to go save as syringe cap 10 milliliters. So that creates a new file and come back into this uh, dimension right here and take that down to 17 millimeters in diameter. And again, depending on the 3D printer we're working on, that might be better off being 17.2 or something like that, just to give us a bit more meat around there. But uh, let's just double check and make sure we did get that 17. And there we go, 17 millimeters on the inside diameter. And close, and let's save that. Okay, now it's possible that you want to uh, get an idea of how big these things actually are. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer nearby, um, you can print out a two-dimensional version of these different drawings. And so what we're gonna do is you could print them out one by one. I'm gonna show you how to get them all on the same page, which is why I've saved three different versions. And I'm just gonna close this document right here. And I've got a new one uh, available right here. I am just going to uh, give this a name. So I'm gonna save this as, uh, it's going into the syringe excavator project. I'm gonna call it syringe cap drawings. And then what we can do is right now, as we've been designing these parts, we've been designing them as bodies. And uh, Fusion 360 has these names of bodies and components. And you can have multiple components in a drawing. So I'm just gonna bring that in right there. There's my 10 milliliter syringe cap. Uh, let's bring our, let's just click okay on that. I like it there. Let's bring in my 20 milliliter syringe cap. And you can see it's sitting right over top of that. They all come in at the origin. I can click on that blue arrow and I can drag it right over here. That should be enough space for me to put dimension lines in there and the like. And then I'm going to bring my 30 milliliter syringe cap in right here. And bring this up right over here. About the same distance. Let's look at it from the front. Do they look evenly spaced? This one can come in a little bit. Not that they need to be evenly spaced, but they look neater that way. Okay, so I've got those three different uh, size syringe caps uh, showing in my drawing right here. And what I'm going to do now is I want to create a two-dimensional drawing uh, and dimension it for those three different syringe caps. First of all, you'll notice that right in here, these have all been stored in here uh, as the parts that they are. And you can go in and you can access the various parts of each one of them. So if you had to edit them in here, you could. But uh, we're going to use this feature later on because we're going to be able to come along and we're going to be able to mate some parts together and uh, uh, put some parts in there together, join them with joints. And then we're actually going to be able to test how they move. So some really cool features uh, that you start to get as you start to assemble parts in uh, Fusion 360. Okay, but right now we want to get a two-dimensional drawing. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say drawing and I'm going to take the drawing from the design and I want the full assembly. If I only wanted to draw one of the parts from the assembly, I'd be able to do that. And uh, we're going to create a new drawing from scratch in millimeters and our paper size, if we want to print it out on standard eight and a half by 11 paper, is going to be pretty close to the A4 size 
uh, and you've got a choice right in here. You can have it be a portrait uh, or landscape. Okay, and I think for this one, we want to go wide rather than tall. Click on OK, and now a new drawing pops up in here. And in just a moment, we'll get a new sheet come in here. And you can see it's got my three syringes there, but it's got them at a scale of one to five on my drawing. You might have one to two. Let's make them one to one. And there they go. They show up as uh, life size right in here, uh, one to one drawing. And you can position your base view right here. We'll be able to change that base view uh, later if we want to change it. But go ahead and click it in right here. And uh, we will say OK. And that's what we would see if we were looking down into each of the syringe caps. And it gives us uh, the best information that we need for dimensioning them. Now, that gives us one view. We'd like to create another view. So what we're going to do is I've right clicked on this view and I'm going to take a projected view. And the parent view is right here. And then I can come down here and this will give me a projected view. Of what it looks like from the side and I will press enter because I'm all done. Now right now that's not showing me uh, a lot of information uh, because we've got a curve right here so that's not showing up as a sharp line uh, and uh, we probably need a bit more information in both of our drawings to get all of the details out. So what we want to do is we want to get some hidden lines available right in here. So what I'm going to do is just take this view, double click on the view, and my drawing view options pop up right here. And we're going to tell it we want visible and hidden edges so that we can see where some of those come through right in there. And we will say uh, close that. And let's take this view and add our uh, visible and hidden edges. We don't want shaded. We just want visible with hidden edges. And we will close that. And there we go. Uh, ideally, we'd add another view from the end to show exactly how, uh, how, this, uh, how the holes have been dimensioned. But uh, I think we've got a few techniques that are going to allow us to show that fairly well even though we might break a rule and dimension to a hidden line. Eh, it's not so much a rule as a guideline, but uh, OK. Before we get going on here, there's a few things that we can add to uh, make our uh, drawing easier to read. We can add a center mark right here. And let's just pick one of the circles. There we go. Pick a full circle. And it marks it with a center mark right there that shows that our drawing is indeed centered. And uh, we can uh, create a center line between, uh, well, we don't need that. That shows our center mark right there. And uh, we've got our bolt circle diameter coming along right in here. Let's add some dimensions now. And uh, so just carefully watch where you put your dimension. And this is a key dimension right in here. So we'll put that dimension. And we'll just place it off to the side. That one's 17. This one's 22.9. That one's 24. Really critical that we know those dimensions. OK, a little bit of a delay there while I figured something out. What I wanted to do was uh, dimension this wall thickness right here between the inner and outer uh, radius. And uh, the uh, radius tool really was not working well. So what I'm going to do is uh, instead I'm going to pick up a specifically aligned dimension right here and then just zoom in a little bit and dimension right there dimension right there and I'm going to get a dimension of three now actually I don't like where that three is sitting right now I want that to come up there I'm just going to hit control Z and undo that 
because if I draw the aligned dimension starting right here and coming up to right there, then the three comes out on the top. And I'm going to put that over here. Actually, I think I'm going to put it right over here so it's out of the way of some of the other dimensions that I'm going to draw. Okay, so there we go. That shows us that we've got a 17 millimeter diameter in here, three millimeter wall thickness up to the top. And uh, let's uh, do a couple more dimensions right here. And uh, what should we do next? Well, we've got a couple of radius corners in here. So again, click on dimension and it's not what we want. Hit escape, dimensions. There we go. I just had to get the correct radius selected. And we said radius two right there. And same thing right here. Radius two right there. That should show up for most of our dimensions on there. And then we've got to provide a little bit of horizontal dimensioning right in here. And so we might want to dimension from this side to the center line. And there we go. That's going to be 20 right in there. And uh, then where else can we dimension this? Now, ideally, we don't dimension to a hidden line. Uh, we should be showing an end view right on there, but I'm starting to run out of a little bit of space on this page. And uh, so what we'll probably do is let's cheat a little bit and be bad. We'll dimension to the hidden line. Say that that's uh, 2.77 and we'll dimension out here to show that that is 10. And because we've got this marked off with the center line, I think someone reading the dimensions can assume that most of this is going to be symmetrical uh, throughout the drawing, that that dimension right there carries on all the way through over to there. Um, let's see, what else do we need to mark out? Oh, the bolt circle diameter. So uh, let's do a dimension. Uh, we should be able to dimension the circle. And then just place our dimension right out there. And then uh, take a dimension from there to right there. Oh, that's going to be ugly if I put it right there. Let's take that dimension and go from giving me the center of that circle. Let's see if I can get it. dimension. There we go. From that center to that center. We'll bring that up there. Uh, down here we can again break the rules a little bit and dimension to a hidden line. Actually we've already dimensioned that hole. We don't need to do that anymore. Uh, so let's just dimension here to here to got to click the lines correctly as I do it from there to right there. I don't want that dimension there. That's not dimensioning anything. Uh, so let's see. We know that that's 20, which means that the overall dimension is going to be 40 because it's mirrored up and down right here. We've got a hole running through right there. We should dimension the center line for that hole. So let's add a center line right here. And first edge, second edge runs right through there. So if I want to dimension 
uh, to that center just to make sure that everybody knows that that height is going to be five there we go that's the same on all of them and I think everything else that we've drawn on here translates over to these other drawings very well. So if you needed to know what radius that was, you could look over here if you needed to know what size the hole was. So there we go. Um, I'm sure there's uh, a few minor sins of dimensioning beyond uh, dimensioning to the hidden lines that we've made. But uh, somebody reading that drawing should have all the information that they need in order to uh, replicate this design. Oh, one more thing I want to add, um, a little bit of text. Let's just put some text up here and say that this is for a 10 milliliter. You can move that around so it lines up nicely with that drawing. Let's add some text. And this is a 20 milliliter. down just a little bit keep everything nice and neatly aligned why are those not wanting to line up for me There we go. Come over and pick that point up. And then we'll add another bit of text over here. We can... oh, not right there. I just want to go text. If I put it over top of there, I can get that circle. I will align it later. And this is our 30 milliliter syringe. I think I got it aligned right the first time. There we go. It knows where it should be. Okay, to uh, get the uh, printed out version of that, look at that. We've got the date stamp on there. We've got the draw uh, uh, the name in there. We can add details in here if we want. And what we're going to do is we can go directly to PDF output and uh, all sheets and we'll open the PDF when it's done and it works on it it's going to want us to save it somewhere uh, we will call that uh, syringe cap drawings and there we go we have a beautiful sheet at one-to-one -one scale already for printing. Now what's really useful about this, like I say, is if you don't have a 3D printer, but you want to get a sense for how big these things actually are in real life, you can print this out and you can get a 2D representation. And I've done some design work with a friend remotely uh, who were trying to get things just the right size. And uh, he would cut these out and then take, uh, take them to the uh, bicycle that we were designing a part for, and he could hold it in there and we could actually see if the profiles we were designing were going to fit. Okay, there we go. Um, have fun and create a beautiful drawing.